one and all, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, all the different people of Earth and beyond, friends, family, allies, and animals, to the mysterious world under our feet of Beth the Bunny and her fabulous friends. Welcome to the transmissions of Rabbit Ears. Okay, yeah. Christmas time in the bunny cave. Okay. Dashing through the snow in a one horse open sleigh. Oh, the hills we go, laughing all the way. Ha ha ha. Bells on bobtails ring, making spirits bright. What fun it is to ride and sing a sleigh song tonight. Oh, jingle bells. Ago, I thought I'd take a ride, and soon Miss Fanny Bright was seated by my side. The horse was lean and lank, misfortune seemed his lot, and soon he was stuck in some sort of a drifted bank, and then he got off sought. Oh, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Beautiful. Merry Christmas, Beth. Merry Christmas, Mr. Blaze. Merry Christmas, Magic. Happy Christmas. Merry Christmas, Magic. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. <laughs> Hello everyone, and welcome once again to the mysterious adventures of me and my half-witted companion Gerald, as we try to explain the complexities of the universe to each and every one of you. Hank! We aren't trying to explain complexities, we're just trying to get some lunch! Our annual, special, Christmas-flavored hot dogs! Ah, uh, yes, Gerald. But isn't it possible that the mysteries of life could somehow be summed up in their entirety during the act of getting some Christmas-flavored hot dogs? Hank! You are a total idiot! Don't be so sure, Gerald. What kind of Christmas-flavored hot dog do you want? Um, I don't know. Just a regular Christmas-flavored hot dog, I guess. And a can of orange soda pop. Excellent. And I will get a Christmas flavored Polish sausage with cheese and a coffee. So, let me get this straight. Gerald would like a mouth full of radioactive fish, and Hank would like to soak his head in a bucket of live termites. <laughs> I don't think I have ever seen someone get an order so terribly wrong. Hank, I have a bad feeling about this hot dog man! <laughs> Crazy Carmichael, you were the hot dog vendor the whole time? You got that right, sissy man! And you have walked right into my trap! <laughs> Trap? What trap? That trap. <laughs> Sid Worm and the Blackbird. Sid Worm was born deep down in the black, black earth. When he opened his eyes for the very first time, he saw that he was in a long room with smooth mud walls and a carpet of soft yellow leaves. On the wall above his head was a picture of a big handsome worm 
dressed in a smart brown suit. And Sid knew at once that that was his daddy, Mr. Samworm. His mummy was called Susie, and she was busy working in the kitchen. Sid could smell a lovely, yummy smell of newly baked acorn bread drifting in through the open door. When Sid turned his head to the right, he saw five little pink faces, just like his own. And when he turned his head to the left, he saw four more faces. And you know, they were just like the others. They were Sid's brothers and sisters. And they were all tucked up in the tiniest little cots you ever saw. Sid was beginning to feel hungry, and when his brothers and sisters began to cry, he cried too. Have you ever heard ten little worms all crying at the same time? My goodness, they make a dreadful noise, I can tell you. Mummy Worm soon came hurrying in from the kitchen, and she was carrying bottles of warm daisy milk and thick slices of acorn bread, spread with lots and lots of sweet and sticky bee jam. Now, as every good mother knows, there's nothing better for growing strong and healthy worms than plenty of sweet and sticky bee jam. When the babies had finished all the milk and eaten every crumb of bread, they all went back to sleep. Oh, hang on, just a minute, did I say they all went back to sleep? No, look, one of them still has his eyes open. Can you guess which one it is? Yes, you're right, of course, it's Sid. He wanted to be up and about and looking in cupboards and peeping round dark corners. There were long passages leading off in all directions, and he decided to explore one of them. Putting his head into the first passage, Sid felt a cool wind on his face, and his nose could smell a strange, exciting smell. As he moved along the passage, wind got cooler, the smell got stronger, and the light got brighter. Hurrying forward, he suddenly came up to the end of the passage and popped up into the air. Sid looked around, saw that he had come up to the lovely garden. The smell had been a lovely mixture of roses and bluebells and tulips and honeysuckle. Oh, he thought. What a big world there is up here. Oh, what danger. He should have told his mother where he was going. She would have warned him all about the big blackbird that lives in the garden. Now, that bird loved to eat worms, and he could have them for his breakfast and his dinner and his supper too if he could get them. Just then, Sid heard a noise behind him. Looking back, he saw a pair of big yellow claws. Above the claws was a pair of long yellow legs. And above the legs was the biggest, blackest, and the hungriest blackbird in the whole world. Sid tried to get back down the hole, but although he was quick, that blackbird was even quicker. He caught Sid by the neck and held him tight. Sid closed his eyes and thought, Oh dear, how silly I have been. I'd never see my mother and father again. Just then a very strange thing happened. He was grabbed by the tail and felt himself being pulled the other way. That blackbird was so surprised that he opened his beak and Sid tumbled down the hole right into his mummy's arms. Do you know what had happened? Mrs. Worm had guessed that her son was in danger and had followed him along the passage. She was just in time to save him 
from being eaten by that naughty blackbird. She gave Sid a big hug, wiped away his tears, and led him back down to their cosy little house deep under the ground. Come along, she said. You're just in time for tea. I will see if we can find a special treat. When they got home, Sid's brothers and sisters all gathered round to hear about Sid's big adventure. Now, children, said Daddy Worm, I hope you will remember what's happened to your brother today. You must always tell us if you want to go outside to play. Ah, but what about that blackbird? Well, he didn't go hungry. He found a big, juicy red apple. And if he can't get worms, apples are his favourite food. I do hope Sid will be more careful in future, don't you? With those fools Hank and Gerald out of the way, I am free to destroy the entire planet by using my machine to turn the world's electricity into a chocolate hazelnut sandwich spread, thereby making every electrical appliance in the world sticky and useless. There won't be a single light bulb lit on any Christmas trees in the world! <laughs> Crazy Carmichael, you are totally insane! And honestly, I have a few questions about your motives and plans. Yes, first and foremost, why did you need to get me and Gerald out of the way at all? We were just getting some lunch and didn't even know about your plot to destroy the world. Also, may I add, if it is okay... It's perfectly okay to make additions, Gerald. Like, 47 plus 12? Not that kind of addition, Gerald. Though, that is also acceptable. 59! 59! 59! Correct, Gerald. And if we ever get out of here, I will give you a gold star. Thanks, Hank. I was just also wondering how making things sticky could destroy the world. It seems more just like an inconvenience than, say, an Armageddon. You are both stupid, though my plans have now totally changed. And instead of my first ingenious plan with the chocolate and the light bulbs and all that, I will now use my machine to destroy you two. Instead, by turning my machine into a beef jerky catapult that will fling beef jerky at my enemies at the speed of 400,000 miles per second. That's not really going to accomplish anything. And even if you wanted to get me and Gerald out of the way, you could probably still do your stupid hazelnut extension cord master plan. Crazy Carmichael, you're a total idiot! Why are you guys being so mean? Especially at Christmas time. I'm just trying to make something of myself. Yeah, by being a total idiot? I'm leaving. I'm going to go work at that t-shirt shop on Main Street again. At least there, I had a little respect. Hmm. Hank? Yes, Gerald? I want a hot dog! 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 I hear you, old buddy. And I must say, I have a strange desire for beef jerky as well. Ah. <laughs> hey Beth, I got a question for you. What's the question? Uh, I was just wondering if you know Dasher and Dancer. Dancer? And Prancer. Prancer? And Vixen. And Vixen? Do you know Comet? Comet. And Cupid? Cupid. And uh, Donner? Donner. And what's that other guy's name? Blitzen. Blitzen. What do you recall? Oh. 
the most famous reindeer of all. Do you recall him? I do recall him. What's his name? Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer had a very shiny nose. And if you ever saw it, you wouldn't even say he glowed. All of the other reindeer used to let me call him names. They never let poor Rudolph join in any reindeer games. Then one foggy Christmas Eve, Santa came to say, Rudolph, with your nose so bright, won't you guide my sleigh tonight? Do you think he will? I think he might. Then all the reindeer loved him, and they shouted out with glee. Yippee! Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer, you'll go down in his ring. Didn't really know how to end that, but I think I think it was fun anyway. Well, with and with that, with that beautiful tale of Santa Claus and Rudolph, I bid you all happy Hanukkah and a good night. Good night. <laughs> Wonderful, marvelous, stupendous! Just look at all those letters. <laughs> they don't forget old Papa Noel, Saint Nicholas, Santa Claus. <laughs> Let's see now. <laughs> My dear Santa Claus, this year I have behaved very well. I have been obedient and have studied very much. For that reason, please try to bring me these toys. A toy automobile, a submarine, a football, a bat, roller skates, a scooter, a cannon, a rocket, a bicycle, an atomic laboratory, a machine gun. Ooh! Oh, golly. And many thanks. <laughs> so be it. <laughs>